So the first thing you all probably notice is the change of scenery. I thought it was nice outside and so I decided to record out here rather than in front of my bench. But what I wanted to talk about today was that I finally finished the version 2 of my module coil generator based on the V3 of my module coil design. This generator has various improvements over the previous version, which I will go over in this video. Hi, I'm Adamant and welcome to another installment of Doing It Ourselves, the show where I show off projects, experiments and other stuff that helps propagate decentralized solutions for sustainability and abundance. In this episode, I'm going to be showing off and detailing the V2 of my module coil generator. And at the end, we're going to do some tests. So without further ado, let's get into it. So the first improvement I've made to my generator actually has nothing to do with the 3D printed parts and everything to do with what they're attached to. Both this generator and my previous one use a 10 mm shaft that is attached to two ball bearings. However, in my previous generator, I kept these stock when building them and didn't really tinker around with them at all. They were just used as they came out of the packet. This time I filled around with the bearings a little. I took off the plastic caps and sprayed some PTFE lubricant into the bearings which made them spin a lot easier and more able to retain their rotational speed. PTFE is what I had available but it is nowhere near the greenest solution in the world. PTFE is actually a forever chemical, it's a perfluorinated uh, hydrocarbon, well not really a hydrocarbon anymore but you get the point. It's, a, it's, it's one of those things that lingers in the environment for a lot of time and so it's a pollutant. A much greener solution would be to use a thin layer of graphite uh, spread amongst the inner parts of the bearing and what that should do is provide a reduction in friction as well. Perhaps not to the degree of PTFE but it's at least something. However, you want to avoid putting too much graphite into the bearings as it can risk dunking them up. And as you can see here, it's a night and day comparison between the uh, bearings I lubricated and the stock ones. And obviously this means that it will be much easier for the rotor of my generator to spin around and generate energy. Do keep in mind, however, that there is a trade-off and that is that if you do lubricate them in this way, the bearings will wear down a little bit more quickly. Next is the module coils themselves. This generator uses my V3 module coil design, or you could call it a actually 3.5 because I had to make a minor edit in order to make it more printable and increase its uh, mechanical strength. I found that the original V3 was very delicate, especially when I printed it on my uh, larger nozzle, and I had to make the edit in order to make uh, this design viable. On top of that, these coils are printed on a standard 0.4, which gives them a lot better print quality, and using the 0.4 nozzle didn't really increase the print time all that much. Nevertheless, the rest of the coil holder is basically the same as before, as I say, apart from the edit I made to the rotor facing side. For each of these, I was actually able to wind 800 turns of 0.2 millimeter wire. And on measuring the resistance, I found that each coil has approximately 27 to 28 ohms. When I was done winding each coil, I could utilize the cable management slots, which were a feature I introduced in my V3 design to reduce mess and to decrease the risk of tangling and the wire getting caught in the rotor, which was a problem with the V1 generator. Anyway, after I doubled up the ends and stripped off the insulation, the coils were ready to be used. Next, the rotor. My intent with this design was to reduce the height of the generator overall, specifically the stator coils, so that I could have more turns of wire with less overall wire length. And this means less resistance, 
which means that these coils will be able to provide more current as a result. See Ohm's law. The magnets I'm using for this rotor are, as such, shorter. This shouldn't tangibly reduce efficiency or output, and it helps reduce the package size of the generator as a whole. Like the previous design, the rotor for this generator uses a hallback array, which in plain English means arranging the magnets in the rotor so that the rotor has a few very powerful poles as opposed to many weaker ones. Hallback arrays also reduce the amount of magnetism that's wasted by having half of the poles facing away from the stator like in a regular motor or generator. The one caveat is that it does reduce frequency, but it gives the rotor overall a lot more oomph. The only real major downside to hallback arrays is that they are an absolute pain to assemble. The reason being that when you're putting the magnets into the slots on the rotor, you're constantly having to wrestle with the magnetic fields of the adjacent magnets and that complicates manufacturing. Having a hallback array means that you can emit uh, ferrous materials from the design, which simplifies things quite a bit. I assembled the rotor in a very similar way to the one last time, except this time, instead of two rotor halves, I'm only using one, and for the other bit of the rotor, I am basically using a cap that I designed by essentially cutting off most of the rotor half in FreeCAD and, and making some adjustments. And there we go, we have a cap for our rotor, which the STL will be available on my Thingiverse page along with everything else. Now I don't know why, but I had great difficulty in attaching the bottom bearing to the shaft of the generator and ensuring that it had a tight fit. I tried all sorts of things that I could wedge in there in order to get the bearing to grip the shaft. Uh, I tried PTFE tape, I, I tried uh, napkins, I tried aluminium foil. None of them worked. All of them kept breaking and tearing. Um, I even tried uh, a piece of cop wedging a piece of copper wire in there, but that broke as well. What I ended up doing is getting fed up and just hot gluing the things together. But yet again, that's not the greenest solution. What you could do is use a piece of strong, thin cloth, cut that down to size and wedge that in there. And that should give you a snug fit. With the bottom cap, I was just able to use a napkin and tear away the excess. And that worked pretty well. After essentially the bottom half of the generator was assembled, I began fastening the coils to the bottom cap. I made a change to the caps here. Instead of having slots where the coils could loosely fit into and then have two screws which sort of fasten the two halves together, what you have instead now is these slots where you can insert screws into and you can fasten the coils directly onto the stator caps. This reduces wobble from the coils and it actually makes the generator a little bit more sturdier. Now I kind of made a mistake here in that I forgot to take into account in my designs the fact that the two bolts that hold together the two halves of the rotor, the ends of them protruded out slightly. The designs as they are don't actually give enough clearance for the rotor to to spin. The way I got around that was to actually back up the top bolts of the stator coils with three nuts and yes it looks a tiny bit janky, I don't think it, it looks too janky but it it works, it gives enough clearance for the, uh, the, for the rotor to spin and for everything to work properly. For connecting everything together, I decided to completely ditch the crimps and instead opt for Vargo connectors. And what this does is it gives the generator basically full modularity, which is kind of the spirit of the design. And additionally, I actually find that it gives a better connection between the coils than the, even the crimps did. Probably because I was bad at crimping or something like that. But anyway, I found these gave a more reliable connection. 
and in my opinion they look a bit nicer too. Connecting the coils of the generator start to start and end to end was much easier this time and in the future if I wanted to I could change the wiring configuration so for example if I wanted more current or if I wanted to try using this generator as a motor I could change it so that it has a Y or Delta configuration for example. After confirming the generator has continuity via testing its resistance I began to put it through its paces so first of all I confirmed the generator works by twisting it with my hand I got a few volts out of it and then I decided to rev things up a little so I dusted off my Pelton wheel that I made for my February vid and got out my hairdryer and blasted some air on it and made it spin really really fast at what seems like a very high rotational speed I was able to get 22 to 23 volts out of this thing which is comparable to my previous generator however do bear in mind that this one with its lower resistance will be able to output a fair bit more current than the previous one. I will be doing more tests with this generator in the future and so there you will see what kind of real power output this generator can produce. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it handy or at least informative. If you want to see more projects, experiments, research and development surrounding the propagation of sustainability, abundance and DIY slash decentralized solutions, then why not give a like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you all for watching, take care and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.